honestly, I think I failed just to get humbled because if I passed the OSWE in one go, ish, my head would have gotten so big. Trust. OSCP, one go. OSWE, one go. <laughs> what is up, YouTube? Welcome to uh, mostly unscripted OSWE review. More chill, laid back review. I just have notes, so this video might be long, it might not. I'm just going off the dome. Telling you what I thought along the process and what I thought after I completed the exam. Before we get into it, I'll just give a brief overview of what I'll be talking about. I'm going to be talking about opportunity cost, the course itself, how to study for the course, and then how to study in general, and then some extra or external resources for people that like that. Without any further ado, let's get into it. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at my outline just so that I don't forget. I usually go on tangents, so forgive me. So opportunity cost. The definition of opportunity cost is potential foregone profit from a missed opportunity. Why am I talking about opportunity cost? I think it is a very important thing to talk about with certifications and most things in general. This is a term used in business. I did business studies in whatever back in high school, so I know the term. But um, apart from referring to profit, it can be used to talk about time as well, right? The potential foregone time from an opportunity missed. Why am I talking about this? The OSWE took me a very long time, right? I was anxious about taking the exam, but eventually I took the exam, which I failed, by the way. If you didn't know, I failed the OSWE before I passed. So if that gives you some encouragement, sure. I was anxious for a while before I eventually got the certification, right? I ended up getting the news that I passed the exam and then I wasn't as excited. I mean, it's all right, like. Because I started to think, dang, this took me such a long time, right? And it took me about nine, 10 months. Started really studying for it in January, even though I had like browsed through some of the material in December and a bit of November, but I had like exams in school. So I didn't really go deep with it. But once I got the result, I was like happy for a bit. And I was like, but this took so long. Why did it take so long? And I started to think about, um, some of the things I could have done in 10 months. I could have gotten into Bug Bounty. I could have made a lot more YouTube content. I could have done a lot more studying for work in general with like specific tooling and whatnot. I could have gotten into lab building, which is something I always feel like I'm passionate about, but don't put the time in for. I could have done all that, but instead I pursued the OSWE and don't get me wrong, it's a great achievement. My manager was telling me, be happy for yourself, be proud. It's a great achievement in your career. And I was like, sure, yes. But I can't stop thinking about the fact that it took so long. I don't know why I can't stop thinking about that. But for me, I started to think, when I do a review, what am I gonna tell people? Is it worth it? If it's gonna take that long? That's just up to you to decide, honestly. Some people study for some certifications for a very long time. I know people that have been doing OSCP for like a year and a half, maybe two years, maybe three, some people. And uh, they just don't stop. They keep going. So the question is, is the OSWE worth studying for? It's up to you. I think it was a good challenge for me personally, mentally especially, because it took such a toll on me. And uh, I just had to lock in for such a long time. So yeah, it helped me train that mental aspect. I did learn a lot from it. Do not get me wrong. I learned a lot from the OSWE. Was it worth it? We'll see in the long run if I can apply the things I learned in like my work, my day-to-day -day stuff, some of the projects I do on the side. So should you take the OSWE? Go for it, man. That's just what I want to touch on in terms of opportunity cost and the question, is it worth it? If it takes that long, is it really worth it considering you can do so many other things? But at the same time, if you don't do it, what are you really going to do the other things? They don't know me, so 
son. Were you really gonna start doing bug bunny hunting? They don't know me, son. Were you really gonna start creating labs? Were you really gonna make YouTube content? You know what I mean? You don't really know until you actually do it. Now, put the ranting aside. Let's get into the actual course. What does the course look like? What's in it? What should you do? How to navigate it? ETC. So the course has modules. Each module has a lab, like a machine. And so it's basically case studies of these machines. And they're broken down into modules. At first, you will realize that this course is very haphazard. I put out a video a couple of months ago that said DOSWE is actually really terrible. And because at the time, this is the phase I was at. Everything was all over the place. But at the end, it all makes sense. So, like I said, it's case studies. You just have to go through each one and take very detailed notes. If you don't understand something, even after reading and going deep into it, just move on for now. I'll keep saying it's, it seems very haphazard when you're just starting out and you're confused and you have no idea what direction is this because they tell you, okay, there's a vulnerability here. It's online this of this file. And you're like, how the hell did you find that? You didn't even tell me how you found that, right? And that's just how it is for most of the course modules. They say there's a vulnerability here. You can use this command to find it. And it might be on line 267 of this file. And you're like, what's the thought process? But if you keep going, if you keep going through all the modules and you probably have to repeat them again, you will start to get and understand the thought process behind most of the things, right? They teach you both white box and black box testing. So most of the modules are like white box, obviously it's uh source code review exam and there's some black box stuff that you have to take into account as well so don't neglect that aspect and then they teach you how to think about certain things given certain things right at first it will be confusing but if you take good notes and you pay attention and you just dive deep into the material and do the extra mouth that they give you you will see how to think about certain things Oh, you have a, a user cookie that doesn't have the HTTP flag set. What can you do with that, right? You have access to some unauthenticated portions of the website that have certain functionality. How can you deal with that, right? You can only authenticate to the application because the unauthenticated parts don't give you much attack surface. What can you do with that? You get to start thinking like that. And um, the more you do it, the more you go through the material, it starts to click. And then there's extra miles in the modules. Extra miles are just some questions they have in some parts of the module, sometimes in the middle, just while you're going through the module and sometimes at the end that require you to do some extra research on specific things. And these are pretty difficult for the most part. I didn't finish most of them, if any, during my first run of the material. Like the first time I was going through each module, I didn't complete many of them because they're just difficult. You don't know what exactly they're asking. You don't know where they're going with what they're talking about. And uh, you just don't know. I don't know if it's just that. I don't know if it's just me. I'm probably just dumb. But yeah, extra miles were confusing at first. But one thing I will say is once you go through the material one, two, three times, you will be able to complete most of the extra miles but you do not need to do all of them some are just taking you on a rabbit hole or taking you on a journey that would be beneficial obviously but if you're constrained on time you don't have to do all of them and that's obviously going to be a very important thing because not everyone's going to have one year access to the osw you're probably going to be able to purchase three months access can you purchase three months access for osw let me not lie let me look this up real quick dang it's 1600 bucks that's crazy for 1900 for 90 days of lab access so if you have the 90 days of lab access you obviously are short on time so just run through the material whatever extra mile you don't really understand you can skip it and then try come back to it once you have the time now let's get into how to study for the exam the one thing i noticed about the osw compared to something like the oscp or the pnpt can you see my fingers oscp and pnpt this exam is very dense and it's reading material right you need to learn how you learn learn how you study best are you a visual learner do you watch videos and understand better do you want to read stuff from a pdf 
do you like reading stuff from a physical book would you like writing stuff down etc learn how you learn and apply that to your learning don't just jump into the material or whatever like you would with the oscp that's what i did personally i don't really learn from reading pdfs off the screen i just hate that method but i did that with the oscp and i was fine but with the ofwe you read something as soon as you click to go to the next page you don't remember anything you just read so i had to ponder how do i study i know how i study i was very good at studying back in high school i can apply that here right take notes on my ipad writing stuff down and then i can transfer it to notion after right so that i have like a cheat sheet of the things i can do really quickly the material is dense so if you try half acid it will not go well for you at least that's why i think it took me so long with like the first and second iteration i was just trying to read off my screen and at some point i was like this is not working because i don't remember anything one thing i would like to note and mention is that there is there is a lot of documentation that you might need to read anything they link in their pages as documentation that you should look at as a reference look at it go deeper into most technologies and some of the other random th stuff you might think is useless just read on that it might come handy in the exam or in the future right just get used to reading documentation understanding technologies and uh, it'll be better for you in the long run, even if it doesn't work the first time in the exam, like me, right? Go through each module and take very detailed notes. Take notes of how they think, why they made you do something. One of the examples I'll probably keep giving is you don't have access to the authenticated portion of the exam, of the web application, my bad. What can you do with what you have? That's something they don't really press on most of the time, but there are a couple of modules that press on that. And so if you have that scenario, what do you do? There's going to be different scenarios and you're going to think, you're supposed to think to yourself, what can I do with this? What can I do with that? Why did they do this specifically? If this is there, then that should be there. If not, this should be there. Make a whole mind map and either obsidian or like Excali draw where you connect everything because trust me, everything is connected. Create a mind map, go through the course material a couple of times, have at least an hour or at least an hour and a half whenever you sit down to study. I noticed that sometimes I'd want to study for like 20 minutes. That's not going to work. Like I said, the material is dense. There's a lot of documentation to read and there's a lot of code to go through. So. If you just start something and you leave it half done, not even a quarter done, you can't even do half of a module in 20 minutes. So if you just start and you go through like one or two pages of the course material or whatever, and you leave it for like the next day, that's not going to work for you. Honestly, trust me, even if you think you're good at studying and you retain information, nah, give yourself time to digest everything and at least go through an entire section then you can continue from another section in the next day or during your next study session and then extra resources or external resources for those people that like that htb i did htb for a while it was in my game plan but um time like i said if you have 90 days of lab time maybe do htb before you even buy the lab access or after, whilst you're waiting for your exam, after your lab access has expired. But if you have enough money to burn and uh, get the Learn Unlimited or Learn One where you have access for a year, go for it, man. Do the labs. They are extremely helpful for the most part. I didn't do all of them. Maybe that's why I failed. Shame. But I didn't do all of the HTB machines. Just go through the TJ Now list and do that if you have time if you think it's worth it i think it would be worth it because there is some black box aspect to all testing right you need to understand the application from a user perspective before you even start looking at stuff like source code and all that stuff so black box testing is important like i said there are some black box modules in there as well so htb could be useful 
and then if you also have time and money you could do the oswa the web 200 web 200 is that it is the precursor to the web 300 the oswe so they probably tailored it to be you know suitable for someone to go from 200 level to 300 level in a good amount of time if you know what i mean in the oswa they teach you stuff like cross-site scripting obviously sql origin and tags path traversal all that fun stuff you can look at the syllabus and if you have the money and the time trust me i think this would be beneficial honestly because i did have like a learn unlimited so i had access to the material i looked through some of the stuff i didn't understand xss the stuff is difficult it's just weird but yeah that would be some good material to go through and then port swinger port swinger has really good labs and they're free of course and um you don't have to do all of them but do the relevant do the relevant ones sql xss xse stuff you find in the oswe and when you're doing your external labs your htb your oswa and um your port swinger stuff that is external to the oswe material itself automate everything do your scripting even outside of the oswe machines right scripting takes a long time if you have an hour left and you happen to find your exploit if your scripting skills are not that good you probably won't finish because you won't finish writing your script so scripting is if not the biggest part of the exam obviously you have to automate the entire process after you find your vulnerabilities so don't neglect your scripting learn python learn ruby learn javascript learn go bash maybe if you want to do that if you feel fancy but um learn whatever scripting language you use all of the stuff from offsec is going to be in python most of the stuff you will find on the githubs and the internet is going to be in python so maybe learn python but it is important automate those labs that you do on htb from initial access to exploitation all the steps your script has to do everything 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 by everything i mean everything don't ask me questions everything okay learn to script take very good notes what to study the course material is enough trust me go through it five times and you'll be solid learn to script already said that take very good notes if you can draw a mind map and connect all the dots i am personally glad that i'm done with the oswe it is a long time coming happy about the achievement overall but it is obviously time to move on to other things get into more research maybe some cloud obviously dive deeper with web technologies and all that other stuff and just find something i can like zone in on and just do because i start things and don't finish i think that's something i'm known for at this point with all the random series i have in my youtube playlists that i never actually finish you can't keep getting away with this with that being said thank you for all the congratulations thank you to everyone that helped me along the way i appreciate this i'll be available to help as long as you don't ask anything that violates of six tos obviously but uh, if you're taking the exam all the best study hard you got this even if you fail like me it's a learning curve man it is what it is failure is part of the process and you should learn from it right honestly i think i failed just to get humbled because if i passed the oswe in one go ish my head would have gotten so big trust oscp one go oswe one go <laughs> i'm stronger i'm smarter i'm better i am better but yeah people i'll catch you in the next one